Hi, this is Doc Rick again, and I appreciate you coming back. Having watched our first presentation, I'm glad you chose to continue helping yourself. Now let's take the next step towards giving you full ownership of your body and seeing how your body is functioning from an energy perspective. Now as a chiropractor, in order to help you, we want to evaluate you from an energy perspective so that we can locate any area within your body that is creating an energy drain. How will we do that? If we look at the body from an energy perspective, there is a field of energy that surrounds the body. It flows from the top of the body to the bottom in front, and from the bottom of the body to the top in back in a circular fashion. Do you know what this field of energy is called? It is known as the aura. I'm sure you've heard that term before, and the auric field can be measured and photographed using Carillion photography. And when we look at this field, again, it flows up and back and down in front. And in the front of the body, it gives off positive energy, while in the back of the body, it gives off negative energy. To help this be more real for you, when someone turns their back on you, how does that make you feel? Correct. It makes you feel negative because the back of your body communicates negative energy, again, while the front communicates positive energy. The next piece of information needed is coming out of the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet is also positive energy as this is how we contact the world. And out of the backs of your hands and the tops of your feet, we have negative energy. And this is important to appreciate. Now if we look at a person's face, coming out between the eyes is a major energy center. This is our intention center, where life starts for us, and we engage life by putting positive energy out to our environment from this energy center, similar to what some may call the third eye. So a beam of energy, our intention, engages our environment, and we get feedback through our five main senses. That would be vision, smell, taste, sound, and touch. And these five senses are how we interact with and interpret our environment. It is how we gather information to be processed by our brain. And once that occurs, the brain then helps us navigate our environment. I hope that makes sense to you. Now let's look at each of our senses for a moment. Could a person lose their sense of vision and still lead a successful life? Of course they could, as there are many successful blind people. Likewise, could a person lose their sense of smell and lead a successful life? Absolutely, although food would not be as enjoyable, but it is possible. Similarly, could a person lose their sense of taste and lead a successful life? Again, like smell, food would not be as enjoyable, but we could still manage to pick food that would sustain our health. Next, could a person lose their sense of hearing and lead a successful life? Absolutely. Again, there are many successful deaf people within the world, and that's uh, something that we all need to appreciate. Now finally, what happens if you lose your sense of touch and can no longer feel your environment? Would that be a problem? Absolutely it would, as if you cannot feel or have a sense of touch, your survival would now be threatened because without your ability to feel through touch, you would hurt yourself and it could be fatal, and you would not know it since you lack the ability to feel. This is called congenital sensitivity to pain, or CIP, and is a very serious condition because you can seriously hurt yourself and be unaware of it and possibly bleed to death or rupture an organ or break a bone and not know it. So our sense of touch is our most vital sense and one we cannot live without. This is something we should always acknowledge and work with. And as an interesting observation, do you know what the chief form of health care is in this country as it uses as its primary form of care? It uses masking agents, known as medication, that block your ability to feel your discomfort or symptoms. And as we have learned in our last presentation, it does not address the underlying cause. And this, again, is not okay. What it does do, though, is potentially threatens your survival, as you will continue to do things normally while creating bigger problems in the process. That is why I feel it's important to be able to ask the body questions and determine all the reasons for malfunction, dis-ease, and symptoms so we can address the cause of your health concerns. Does that interest you? And once we restore normal function, the body will be able to regain its health without all the medications or surgeries that have the best intentions for you but are not ideal choice for your health. I hope that makes sense. Now one more point to make and then we'll learn how we will determine what your body is telling you by giving you symptoms and what we must do to restore normal function. If we use magnets as an example to demonstrate energy principles, answer this. Opposites do what? Meaning a positive charge does what to a negative? Correct. They attract. So positive and negative energies come together. 
And knowing that is true, similar energies do what? Meaning if I take the positive pole of one magnet and bring it together with another positive pole, what do they do? Correct. They repel each other or push apart. Now this is most important for this understanding. Getting back to the energy of your body, if we have positive energy coming out of the palms of your hands, and if we have positive energy coming out of the third eye, if we take the positive surface of my hand and place it over your third eye, right in front of your face, the positive energy that naturally comes out to engage our environment will do what? It will get repelled back into the body and overload the system. And when the system is overloaded, what will happen to the overall system? It will weaken or turn off. How will this be demonstrated? Well, we will take a strong muscle with the first muscle test. Then we will overload it with the energy by covering your third eye. The energy will naturally back up into the system, overloading the system, and then we will test the muscle again, and the strong muscle will now be weak. It blocks the energy flow resulting in a strong muscle weakening or to be inhibited. It literally shuts off, similar to a light switch. Now if you turn a light switch off, the energy to the light stops and the light goes out. This same principle works in the body. So if I ask you to hold your arm out straight from your side so that it's horizontal with the floor, and I ask you to resist my pressure and be strong, if I apply some pressure to your wrist and ask you to resist it, your arm stays strong and all is normal. So what does that prove? This tells me that your nervous system is controlling your arm properly and your brain and shoulder muscles are communicating properly. I hope that makes sense. Now, if we do the exact same thing, apply pressure to the wrist, only this time I place the palm of my other hand in front of your third eye, what do you think will happen? Do you think there will be any difference? Do you think the arm will remain strong? Well, if we remember, the palms of the hands give off positive energy. And coming out between the eyes is what kind of energy? Correct, that's positive. And if we know that positive repels other positive, therefore if I place the palm of my hand in front of your third eye, the energy that should come out will be repelled back into the system. And if you put too much energy through a circuit, what will happen to that circuit? Correct, it overloads, it shorts out, or it breaks. It stops the flow of energy. So let's see what your body does with this information. If we take a strong indicator muscle, like your shoulder muscle, and ask you to hold it out strong parallel to the floor, and then I apply some pressure to your outstretched arm at the wrist area while your elbow is locked, you resist the pressure and the arm holds. This is normal and says the nervous system is doing its job with no interference. Next, I take the palm of my other hand and I cover up your third eye while you're still holding your arm out and I repeat the pressure to your wrist and let's see what happens. Your shoulder muscle weakens and your arm goes down as the circuit is interrupted. It blocks the brain from communicating with the shoulder muscle and so the arm drops. Now if we do the same thing with the other arm, you can see that it still works because it isn't about force. It's about the circuit being opened or closed. We just need to establish an effective communication system we can use to communicate with your nervous system and your body. Let's go one step further to clarify this energy flow within the body. What if we use the opposite side, meaning the back side of the hand, that communicates negative energy? What do you think would happen? Would there be any difference? Well, let's see. If we take a strong indicator muscle, like your shoulder muscle, and ask you to hold the arm out strong parallel to the floor like we did a second ago, then I apply some pressure to your outstretched arm and the wrist while your elbow is locked. You resist the pressure, and again, the arm holds. This is normal and says that the nervous system is doing its job without any interference. Next, I take the back of my other hand and I cover up your third eye while you still hold your arm out and I repeat the pressure on your wrist. And what happens? Your shoulder muscle is now strong and the arm stays in place parallel to the floor. And why is that? Remember we agreed that opposites do what? They attract. So the circuit remains strong because it promotes normal energy flow from the positive of your third eye to the negative associated with the back of your hand. I hope that makes sense. Now, we have the basis for a means of communicating with your body that allows us to interact with your brain and the body 
through both the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system. And since the nervous system has no ability to lie, it just simply responds to the stimuli, we can use this information to ask your body several different questions using a specific system of questions designed to determine where your body has communication blockages. I hope that makes sense. And by applying this form of evaluation to your body, do you think this would enable us to learn about your body and its systems and which are working and which are not? Would you like to see for yourself? So now that we have this established communication between the brain and the body, we can then apply this information to a set of established reflex points that represent different functions, different systems, different pathologies or imbalances specific to you in this moment. It is a form of neurofeedback specific to you and your body. Does that make sense? And once we determine all the ways the communication is being blocked, we can then put all the pieces together to determine why your body is not functioning correctly. Does that make sense? I hope so, and I hope you're beginning to see your way out of your health challenge. You may be wondering right now, how many different reflux points are there, Dr. Rick? There's actually hundreds, and we're going to evaluate the 75 most common points that determine where basic functions are working and where they're not working. What will we evaluate? We will look at ear imbalances, eye imbalances, brain imbalances, hormonal imbalances, toxins in the body due to things like parasites, chronic fatigue, intestinal floral imbalances, heavy metals trapped in the liver, salt cerebral spinal fluid imbalances. We will look at essential fatty acids. We'll look at a gland in your cheek known as your parotid gland to see if you chew your food adequately or if you eat like a shark. We'll look at a hiatal hernia, which is what happens when a person doesn't chew their food well enough. We will also evaluate your metabolic system and how your digestive system is working. We will also check a reflex for infections like staph infections or strep infections, lung infections, possibly spleen infections or large bowel infections specific to parasites or flu. We will then look at your liver, gallbladder, and bile duct system. We will evaluate the basic reflexes to determine if you have digestive yeast imbalances, viral imbalances. We'll also check your heart, blood quality, hemoglobin, and the arteries to your heart. And lastly, we will evaluate your thyroid and your adrenal system to determine how your body is handling stress. And by evaluating these 75 different points, we will now know how your body is functioning and where there is interference that blocks normal communication and normal function will evaluate your energy drain. And if you will allow me to evaluate your current level of health, do you think what we will find would be of value to you? I absolutely think so, but it's really up to you. And once we've determined your unique imbalances, next we will need to find what is causing your imbalances to begin with. The cause can have six different components minimally, and these six components are six new reflexes we will use to reference the original weaknesses found in the first 75 that we already evaluated. And this allows us to determine for each weakness what is contributing to the weakness, and more importantly, what goes into understanding the cause of that weakness. These six new reflexes will be related to a person's emotions, the toxins in their body, their nutritional deficiencies, potential allergies that affect function, structural interferences, and physiology. And by asking these six secondary questions, this will help us confirm if the problem is emotional, due to too many toxins, if it's due to nutritional deficiencies, if it's associated with an allergy, is it due to a structural imbalance, meaning a subluxation, or is the problem due to a physiological imbalance? And each of these original 75 that were weak may have one or more of those six different causes. Wouldn't that be a benefit to you to know what are all the factors contributing to your health concerns? Now once we have that understanding, we can then now begin to formulate a plan by taking all the different components and imbalances that come up with a specific recipe to formulate for you and your overall health. We now have the information we need as given to us by your nervous system and your body telling us what your body needs in order to restore normal communication and normal function. It has told us the specific steps it needs to go through to restore normal health for you. I hope that makes sense. Now whether your answer is a yes or no as far as going forward, this is the basis for how we're going to get to the source of all your health imbalances. And by coming into the office, we will do this for you and determine your unique recipe for health.
And once we have your recipe, we simply need to get to work to, number one, remove the imbalances, number two, restore normal function, and then number three, regain your health. Does that interest you? If so, please call the office and schedule your initial consultation and examination, and let's get you back in the game of life where you are winning again. Thank you for your time, and I certainly look forward to serving you.